All right, on to the main show. Um, welcome back, guys. You, Some of you may remember this. I haven't given this guy much love. This is probably my favorite maglev build because I utilized, instead of doing magnets around it, I utilized two large ring magnets and then two smaller ones. So there's no way this guy can come flying out unlike this guy here which is still cool, or that little guy over there, or that big one over there. But this guy, and it's a, it's a huge rotor. I think it has, um, what does it have? Yeah, it has six, six bar magnets. I think they're half inch by four inch, half inch by half inch by four inch bar magnets. And I'm going to revisit this guy. I just recently fixed it back up so that it's sitting perfectly with almost no back and forth play. Um, yeah. So now that I have a bunch of coils, I have a ton of coils, some that I made, some that I got from Sky. I'm going to figure out a way where I can run this and then use these other coils as pickup coils. So, stay tuned. All right, so I'm printing. I printed out another coil and I'm gluing it up right now. I don't want to get the metal too close to the magnet. Here, let me move this over here. Um, yeah, so I'm gluing that up right now. Then I bought some of these, some of these crimped quick connects. I bought a bunch of these and then I got these and these. And apparently you use this tool, crimp these around. I don't know if you can make it out. Let me take it out of here. Uh, let me see if I can open it up. Yeah, you guys are probably seeing these. You crimp one of these around the wire using this tool. And then this is like a little case that goes around it. So you can do a quick connect which is what I want to do going forward with my coils. I also got some of these. Which are also some little quick connect things, which I really like. And you clamp down on it. Oops. Oh, shoot. I think once you clamp it down, that's it. But it, it cuts the wire. Uh, I could probably pry that back open. So I'm printing right now. I'm waiting because I'm printing a stand for this coil. Because I'm going to use this coil as a run slash pickup. And then I'm going to, using acrylic, not 3D printing, I'm going to build a stand that can hold one a coil here, a, a coil here, and a coil here, so that it's completely surrounded by coils. And I don't know if I'm going to use the square coils or if I'm going to use one of Sky's coil. It's a great coil. Um... Or if I'm going to use, like, this is my coil that I made. I really like this coil. And it has the uh, iron-infused PLA for the core. But it also has an air core. So it'll... Oh, yeah, that's cool. So it doesn't super stick to the magnet. I can feel a little bit. So maybe I'll, you know put this one up here like this. Yeah, you can see that it does have some magnetic attraction. But yeah, I haven't 
figure it out yet, but I really like this this um, this maglev rotor. So yeah, so I'm waiting for the stand now. I mean, I could just grab a piece of wood and stick it underneath it, but I want to make it really nice. Um, I think I might have to readjust this again. Yeah, because there's a little bit too much play. You, you should have a little bit of play, but not too much. So I'll readjust that. Get it a little bit tighter. And we'll go from there. I'll experiment around with these. Oops, these, these are kind of like a quick connect setup. I have to figure out exactly how they work. And then these guys here, I think once you close them, they bite into the, the wire or maybe not. Maybe you put a, a stripped wire in it. Once you close it, I think it's sealed. You can't reopen it. Yeah. I mean, you could, but I think you got to. Uh, anyway, I got plenty of them. And then I also got some of these. Because in all my connectors, I don't have any of these type of quick connects where you have the little male and the little female, which are really good for the type of stuff that I do because I want to disconnect and connect things really quickly. I fixed my bridge rectifier or the rectifier and I have to build a housing for this guy. I think I may utilize some of these things. So this is another rectifier, but using smaller diodes. Um, and they both work equally good and they both produce exactly, it's weird because they, it, at the levels that I'm using them, they produce the same, the same output. So there's no real difference. Anyway, stay tuned. Oh my God. So it's pretty tricky using these. Definitely takes a magnifying glass for me, but it works. And so you crimp, you crimp one of the females on, take it off this rack here. Let me focus you. You crimp it on the end there, and then you slide one of these housings over it, and it clips into place. Ah, come on, focus. So now... I would just take and do the same thing on this, but with a with a a separate wire, and then you could push that into the end there, and it will make the connection. Yeah, and so these these turned out to be not so. They're they're good for stranded wire. They're not good for the solid copper wire that I'm using. So because I tried messing with these. I also got these, which are T connectors. So with the T connectors, you can connect them either like that, a dual way, um, a single way. And they, you just put the wire right in there and clamp on it and it cuts into it. But the little... Uh, where is it? Uh, the other ones, what the hell did I just do with those? Anyway, these guys work. They're just really finicky. So I'll have to test it out and see how it works. Anyway, just thought I'd share that. Ciao. And then the other end, you do the same thing, but you do it with one of these. And then you have the little housing there. And then these two guys just clip together like that. And you have a connection. And of course, it's, you know, it can come apart. But that's exactly what I'm looking to do. So I can do some quick connect stuff. Ah, anyway, ciao. All right, I couldn't wait for this stand to get printed out. Oops. Come on, come on, baby. Got to be careful when you move the magnetic field around. It moves the rotor, but that thing is smooth as ice. Look at that. Oh, yeah. And, of course, it's 
see, it's not flashing for me. I don't know why it flashes like that for the cat. Well, I do know why, but so I'm using the JL94 circuit, and that puppy is flying at 12.5 volts. And the gap is very little underneath there. I should take a quick reading and see what I'm producing out over here on the output from the circuit and then the output from the actual coil itself. So let me, here, let me see if I can do this without screwing things up. All right, now let me get my multimeter out. All right, Let's see if I can pop the stand up. Um, so that's AC. Let me see what it's producing over here. 14 volts coming out over there. Let's see what's coming out over here. 11 volts. So if I put them together, I can get about 20, about 30 volts out of it. And that's not even tuned or anything. So this is a great coil. Yeah, that's 14 volts AC. I, I can't get the, um, the, um, the meter in the frame. Sorry, guys. Just have to take my word for it. Not that I would lie for something like that. It wouldn't make any sense. But yeah, I want to I wanna put a coil up here. I want to put a coil over here. And I want to put a coil right there. And see what we can do. Come on, Bessie. Yeah, I have to fix this, too. I mean, it's running really well. But I got to fix the... Um, come on. I gotta fix it because it's not, it's wobbling a little tiny bit because it's not, it's not perfect. But I had to get a run in for today. Ciao. So I figured out the issue. Oops. There's too much flex in these stands. I thought I made them, I even reinforced them, but there's too much flex in there. Um, so I'm going to have to somehow either build something up that goes over, something up that goes over like that, that I could clamp down or something, because there's definitely too much flex in there. Because when I push it in like that, it works a lot better. I've got rid of the play. So let's see. Yeah, see, there's too much flex. If I push in just slightly, it stops that, that wobble. Once it gets up to speed, it seems to be okay. Love that JL94 circuit. Yeah, once it gets up to speed, it's great. Um, but there's definitely too much play. Like I said, it flexes too much. Yeah, see, once I put a little pressure on there, it stops. Anyway, ciao. I also just noticed a design flaw. So this ring magnet captures this other smaller ring magnet. And you can see this one here. If I pull it off to the side, it's right. It's completely level with the outer face. This one is not. It sticks out a little bit. So I think I need to fix that somehow so that it's more encapsulated by the ring magnet. 
And the only way I can do that is to replace the ball bearing I have on the end of that with a smaller one. And luckily, I have a whole shitload of ball bearings. Yeah, easy fix.